Welcome to C programming. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about two dimensional arrays. So we have looked at one dimensional arrays, meaning that we have only values next to each other. So for instance, with the index zero, we've got a value index one, two, three, four. But now we will have a two dimensional array. So how does a two dimensional array look like? So it's actually like a table with rows and columns. So a two dimensional array, we have a, at row zero, we've got column zero, one, two, three. At row one, we've got column zero, one, two, three, and row two. And this will extend depending on how big you define your multi-dimensional array. Now this can continue to three dimension, dimensions, four dimensions, but just note that this will severely impact your computer. And if you don't have a very fast computer, your computer will start to become very slowly because multi-dimensional arrays introduce a lot more memory. So for now, we will stick to two dimensional arrays. So we've got our one dimensional array and then adding one dimensional arrays together, uh, we get a two dimensional array. So that is multi dimensional arrays. So we will do a quick example of the implementation of two dimensional arrays in C programming using the code blocks IDE. So let's get back to code blocks. So first of all, what we will do is we will create a new empty file and we will save this onto our desktop. Uh, we will save this and we will start by saying hash include std io.h, our standard input and output library. Then after we will create our main function And we will say return zero. So that is our basic program. We will always save this first and build and run just to make sure that everything is okay. And then we can continue. So first of all, we will just for uh, illustration purpose, define three two dimensional arrays. And the first one we will call int arr1 and it will be of size three, four. Okay. That means three rows and four columns. And we will give it the values as in the example that we've seen just now. So first of all, we will define each row as the following. So in our outside brackets, it's going to be defined the array. Then the inside curly brackets is going to be row one, row two, row three. So first of all, we will define one, two, three, four, then five, six, seven, eight, nine, then 11, 12. And that's how we define or initialize each element in this two dimensional array. Next up, we will create a very similar array just so that we can see what will be the difference with initialization. And next, what we will do is we will do just the following. We will just say one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And we don't know what's going to happen here. Here we can exactly see that this will be row one, row two, row three. So there's four elements in each column, for each column, and this will be one, two, three, three rows. Uh, but what will happen here? We will see just now. Next, we will create another array that will look very similar. And it's also going to be three and four. But what we will do is now, we will do the same initialization 
as the first but we will skip a few values so first of all we say one two three then just five six oops five six and then nine and what will happen here that will be now the question so we've got three arrays and all three is initialized very differently so what we will do is we will go and print out our arrays and we will say ar array one new line and then i'll just add a new line at the beginning as well and then we want to go and print out this multi-dimensional array two dimensions remember one two two dimensional array so what we will do is we will create a function that will do that for us now this function doesn't have to return in anything it's just going to display a 2d oops 2d array oh, let's make that d as well let's just so display a 2d array and now we will send the array as a parameter but we need to define the columns unfortunately because we don't can't just send a very very big two multi-dimensional array without defining how big it will be more or less with the columns the rows we don't have to define because that will be set but we need to all the rows but the columns we need to give as a parameter int rows and int Okay, so that will be our rows and our columns. So, this is going to be our function to display this multi-dimensional array. So, this 2D array will be sent to this function. We've got the function prototype now, and now we will actually go and create this function. So, how will we do this? First of all, we will create two counter variables and these two counter variables will relate to our rows and our columns and this will look very similar to the double sort algorithm so first of all we've got our outside for loop and our outside for loop will start at i is equal to zero i is smaller than the rows and then i plus plus and then we'll create the inside for loop and the inside for loop will be equal to j is equal to zero j is smaller than the columns and j plus plus great stuff and then we'll go and print out each of the elements so how we will do this is we'll say print if percentage d and we will say a r r so we sent a r r here then what we will do is we will say i and then j and that's how we will print out this multi-dimensional array with two for loops because it's a two-dimensional array there's two dimensions and one for loop will work with one dimension and the inside for loop with another dimension so that's how we will do this but we're going to just add a printf statement here just to split the rows and we can add a new line there so that we can see the difference great stuff so now we've got our display 2d array function and we hope it works and now we can go and use this display 2d array function to actually go and display our array for us so what we will do is we will send arr one three and four so that's three um, rows four columns and that will go and display the first array for us and we can go and copy and paste this for each of the 
arrays we've created. So array one, array one, two, three, array one, two, and three. So now we want to see what's going to be the difference with this initialization of array one, array two, and array three, because it's very different. All three is initialized very different. And what will happen to this, to the arrays? So let's see, we build and run, check if there's no errors and let's go and check. So first of all, our first array is going to be array one. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Okay, so that was perfect. It's exactly how we want it. Array two, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, zero 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 so what will happen here is it will automatically start to populate from the first row and if the first row is done it will continue to the next one so it will automatically overflow to the next row to the next row so this works perfectly for us as well here we define the rows and here we don't define the rows but it will just automatically flow over if it's done with the row and initialized all the elements in that row it will go to the next row and then array three we defined each row again but we didn't populate the complete row and what happened there is one two three and the last element that we didn't define got a zero then five six zero zero and then nine zero 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 okay so that's the initialization and that's multi-dimensional arrays. So remember for each dimension, we need a for loop. So for each dimension, this is going to be the rows. Let's just put it there. That's going to rows and this is going to be for our columns. Okay, great stuff. So each dimension has to have a looping structure. In our case, for loop. So for each dimension of for loop, so if you're working with a two dimensional array, you need two for loops. If you're working with a three dimensional array, you need three for loops, one inside the other. And that is multi-dimensional arrays. Thank you, ladies and gents. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.